Good morning. For those of you who don't know, my name is Maya Karen. I run a fashion blog called Classically Kept. It does feature luxury, contemporary, and how to style and now natural hair care. So if you are into any of those things, please consider subscribing to my channel. Click the notification bell. That way you will never miss a video. So today's video is about an article that I found. It was in Vogue and I did it in collaboration with The Real Real. If you are not aware, I will link Vogue and The Real Real down below. It is a resale company pre-loved. So let's say for instance, you are looking for a certain saddlebag or you're looking for a certain color, or maybe you want a saddlebag and you're looking at it for a discounted rate or a discounted price. You would then go on The Real Real and then you'd be able to shop or you'd be able to look for a Dior a saddlebag. So today we are going to go over the 19 best investment bags and the ones that are doing the best on the resale market. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so number one, and if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my phone. If you see me looking over here, I'm looking at my computer. So first, let's kind of go over the definition of an investment bag, okay? So the definition of an investment bag, an investment bag is basically a bag that has high quality and high desirability. Buying an investment handbag means buying a quality piece that will last over a long term that you will intend to use. Think cost per wear. And that's, to me, that's kind of the gist of it. When we start talking about resale and we start talking about an investment bag, and we will talk about this bag, and we all know probably what this, we probably know three bags on this list that we can talk about right off gate, okay? When we start talking about resale, we start talking about investment. Investment, I guess, for a bag is, let's say, for instance, in 2019, you buy a bag, it's two grand. And then today, here we are in 2023, and it is now maybe like 4,000 or 4,500. It has appreciated, okay? So number one, and a lot of these I am surprised with because these are like newer companies and newer bags for these brands or for these fashion houses, okay? So number one is going to be the Gucci attache bag. It was released in the 1970s, but then it came back in 2022. This bag I don't have a problem with. I'm just very surprised that this is actually number one. Gucci bags somewhat hold their value, but Gucci has also been known to be more so of your kind of affordable luxury. I have heard that their quality is top notch. I don't particularly own any Gucci bags, but let's go ahead and go over some of them. Okay, so, let, so what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna look at what they are going for MSRP or retail, what they're going for on the website when you buy it new, and then we will kind of look to pre-love to see if that is indeed the case, okay? So we're gonna look at the small Gucci attache, and it is $2,690 MSRP retail if you're to buy it new or from the Gucci store, okay? Now, I do have a couple of examples, and I will put them up here or up here so you can see. So I found one and this was actually on eBay. So it is a small one with the Gucci logo. And this one is going for $2,400. So this bag is keep is more is keeping its value. It's going to be a little bit less. I did not find any of these on Fashion File, which I am surprised, but that just kind of means that people are still enjoying the bags and they are still carrying them. And as I said, I'm surprised because this is a pretty new bag for Gucci. And most of the bags that you're talking about, when you're talking about investment bags, you're thinking of like the old, like the old or like the classic bags from a company. Number two is going to be the Bottega Veneta Sardine bag. And I actually debuted or I talked about this bag in one of my new bag release videos. And I don't have a problem with this bag. You guys know that I bought the Lumvin Hobo bag. I love that bag. I don't have a problem with this bag. I love, of course, the Intratico leather, but I also love the top handle. It is very different, okay? Now, we all know that Bottega Veneta purses are not cheap. I have never actually touched a Bottega Veneta purse, but I hear that the leather is top notch, okay? So, this bag right here retails for $4,200, all right? I found a Bottega Veneta on, I think that's One Ann Luxury, for $2,900, the black one. And then I also found another one on Selfridges, which if you don't know, I actually bought my Lemon Hobo bag for like $1,000 cheaper on Selfridges. And it's for $3,055. So it is somewhat holding its value. This is definitely a newer bag for Bottega. I don't know how long it's going to be around, but as of right now, it is considered an investment bag. Number three, Y'all know that I love YSL. Whenever I want to go classic, I go Dior. Whenever I, when I 
kind of want to be like a little edgy or a little out there, I will go to YSL. And to be quite honest, I love YSL, but I'm actually quite surprised that one of their bags made this list because their bags do not necessarily hold their value. I have one, two, I have two or three YSL bags. And if I were to sell them, I probably, well, because of the condition that they're in, I would probably get like I guess you could say top tier or top price for the resale luxury of what it is. But typically YSL bags do not hold their value. If you are buying a YSL bag, you are buying it because you know that you love it. And I haven't sold any of my YSL bags because I love all of them. So the bag that is number three on here is going to be the YSL Le 5A7 in smooth leather. This retails or MSRP is going to be $2,400. They have since come out with a mini size. I believe this is just the regular size that they first came out with. This has come out in so many different colors because of the resale value and because of how popular it is and because we are in kind of like a hobo slash shoulder bag craze, this probably will become a staple for them. So let's see. I found one on Fashion File in suede. This one is... $1,995. I found a black one for $2,250. I've noticed with this bag that the black and more so like your neutral colors retain more of its value, which makes sense. This cream colored one is $1,995. This gray one is also $1,995. So this bag is somewhat holding its value. Okay, number four, and this should be no surprise. You guys know that this is going to make the list, but it is going to be the Hermes Kelly, the number 28. This should be no surprise. Hermes, when it comes to their Birkin and when it comes to their Kelly, will forever be the It Girls bag. It will forever be a classic. The leather is top notch. The craftsmanship is top notch. I think they said something like it takes a couple of days to make one, and it's like several different craftsmen that are making it, okay? So the 28 right now, the last time that I saw it for this particular one was anywhere from like 9,500 to like 10,008. That's if you're buying it in the store. We all know the Hermes games. That's beside the point. But let's take a look on the, I guess you could say pre-love market to see what it's going for, which is at this point a double. Hermes Kelly's and Hermes Birkins have been going for double for quite some years now. So we just had your regular black, it is a 28, and this one is going for about 20. Then you have another one, this is going to be Epsom, is a 28. This one is going for a 17.9. Then we have, this is a Retourne 20, this one is going for 24.9. Then we have Ostrich. This one is going for $34.9. Next, which is no surprise, is going to be the re-edition nylon bag from Prada. More specifically, it is going to be the mini version, okay? This bag retails for $1,390. Of course, the black, they're always gonna have the black. They've done it in pink, they've done it in red, but let's see what it's going on the resale market for. So I have a pink one right here. This is on Fashion File. This is going for $850. We have another one on Fashion File. This is kind of like a bluish, bluish, bluish gray color. This one is going for $5.95. So that's about, that's almost half. And of course, with all of these bags, condition is going to play a part in what you can resell it for. Okay, we have another pink one. This one is $8.50. And then the black one, this one is $9.50. So just like the YSL bag that I showed you, this one, when it comes to the black, is selling for more. Okay, number six is going to be the Louis Vuitton. It is going to be the Neverfull, specifically the MM. It typically comes in three ways. It comes with the monogram, it comes with the Damier Azur, and then it comes with the Damier Abin, okay? So looking here, the Damier Abin currently with the MM is $2,030. The Damier Azur is also $2,030 for the MM. So let's look right here on a fashion file. We do have a Damier Abin MM for $1,295. And then we also have the Damier Azur for $1,250. Next is going to be, and it should be no surprise along with the Hermes Kelly. Next is going to be the Chanel Classic Flap 
More importantly, it's going to be the mini flap. They did not make a distinction between the square and between the rectangle. I would just give you my story. I have a Chanel mini flap square silver hardware and it is the glam skin. I bought this bag in 2014 in Florida at the Galleria Mall. It was the last one or so they told me. The purchase price was $2,999. By the time that I left with taxes and all of that, it was $3,200. If you look on the Chanel website, and I don't know how long this or how current this is because I have not been on the Chanel website in a couple of months. I don't know about jewelry, shoes, or ready to wear. But if you look at their bag section, you will notice that when I put this up, it says price upon request. I don't know how new that is, but I find it very interesting because that means that they can basically, you can walk into a store or you can call and say, hey, how much is this bag? And they can basically give you any price that they want. Let's look really quickly on the pre-loved market. So there is one right here. This is like mine, but mine is just silver hardware. This one is going for $6,205. So already you can see that if I was to sell my Chanel bag tomorrow, I would get double what I paid for it. We have another one that's going for $6,360, okay? So both of these are black with gold hardware. The next one, which I think this is a really pretty color, this one is going for $6,795. This fuchsia one is going for a little bit less. This one is going for $4,595. And then this one is also going for $4,650. So with this, what I'm, what I'm looking at and what I have always seen, especially when it comes to the trends, when you're talking about a Chanel classic flap, whether it be silver, whether it be gold, when it's black, it's going to go for a little bit more. I have personally noticed that when it has gold hardware in the medium, it goes for even a little bit more. Next is going to be Luar. And this was actually a company that I mentioned in my 2022 fashion recap. I will link that down below. This is a very, very, very new company. This bag actually debuted in their fall collection of 2022. So it hasn't even reached a year yet, but these bags are everywhere. And whenever they do debut, they sell out, okay? So here's this bag right here, and this is $500. I was able to find one on the Real Real site Originally it was 310 and then they marked it all the way down to 186 and you can see that it is sold. Next is going to be the Coperni swipe bag. The younger millennials and then the Gen Zers are all over this bag. It was debuted in fall of 2019 and on Farfetch I did find just your classic black one for $686. This is one of these bags that if you look on different websites, like if you were to look on Farfetch, if you were to look on their actual website and then let's say you look on Shopbop, or matches fashion. It kind of is different. It kind of differs in price, but I did find this one for $686. Let's go ahead and go to the pre-loved. I found one on eBay. This one is $650. And then it now on eBay is going for $495. This one, I believe this one is going for $400 as well. And then I found a black one on eBay. Interestingly enough, that's going for $250. Number 10 is going to be Jacque Mousse. It's going to be their Chiquito bag or Le Chiquito bag. This retails for $9.50. And we are going to talk about the Grand one because that is the one that was listed on. This bag is really what I believe put Jacque Mousse on the map. I don't have a problem with this bag. This is a really beautiful color. So let's look and see what it's going for on retail or on resale. So on eBay, I found one for $6.60. Still pretty much keeping its, its value. And this was debuted in 2019. Have another one at $6.20. And then we have another one at $749. So it is definitely keeping its value. Again, I'm very surprised at, not necessarily Jacque Moose, the company itself. I'm surprised at the bag. It's It was only debuted in 2019 and already it's talking about being an investment bag. Next is going to be the Mew Mew Wonder Bag. And again, I'm also surprised because this was actually debuted in their autumn winter 2022 collection, but it is doing very, very, very well. You have many celebrities that are carrying it okay so right now and it's the mini one so right now this is retail or on the site is going to be two thousand six hundred dollars let's look at some pre-loved i found a white one on ebay for two thousand six hundred and ninety dollars i found one on fashion file for two thousand fifty dollars 
and then I found another black one for $2,095. So number 12 is going to be the Prada re-edition in 1995. And the real world has said that since we have come out of the pandemic and since people are returning back to work, they are seeing an uptick in like work totes. So this makes perfect sense, okay? This was re-debuted in 2022. So let's see, on the website, it is, and this is the medium size, it is currently going for $3,700. I found one on Vestivere Collective for $2,690.33. That is a red one. And then the black one, which is going for a little bit more, it's, you know, more suitable for work, is going for $2,999.48. So this bag as well is keeping its value. Number 13 is going to be the Row 90s bag. And in the article, it talks about how there has been an up uptick in cylindrical bags, which I don't have an issue with. And you'll see that with like the trends that are coming out for bags in 2023. Now, as far as the row is concerned, when I think of the row, I don't necessarily focus on their bags. I more so focus on their beautiful foundation pieces. Okay. So this bag, by the way, of Saks is $990. I found one pre-loved and that is on Poshmark. And this person is selling it for $780. So more so, it is keeping its value. The real, the real world has also said that whenever this bag pops up on their website, it sells out instantly. Next is going to be Pauline. This brand was founded in 2016, so still fairly new. We're not even in. We're not even into a decade yet. But I think that and this is their number ten bag. It goes for five hundred dollars on their website. I think that this bag is absolutely gorgeous. Would I carry it? Probably not. But I think the shape of it and the colors that they come out with are absolutely beautiful. And this to me is more so kind of like a minimalist brand. Okay. So I found kind of like this gray one on eBay for $4.99. So this is basically a new bag. <laughs> I found another one on Poshmark for $2.46, about half. And then I found another one, this is also on Poshmark for $2.35, so about half. Next is going to be a favorite brand of mine. And at this point, I do have three bags of his. It is going to be Brandon Blackwood. I have a black croc. I have a Rafia mini. And then I have like a green kind of like lizard lick embossed. Okay. These bags are made so beautifully. They are all leather. And they are, I would not say right now luxury. They are definitely contemporary. They are definitely, mo definitely moderate. My bags were, I have one mini and I had two regular size. The two regular size were both 225. And then I think the mini bag was, I didn't get them on sale. I think it was like two something. These bags, along with another company that we are going to talk about, are actually going for more and sometimes double on the pre-sale market. So let's take a look. The first one that I found is on Poshmark. It is going for $450. And this is a mini trunk. So that is definitely double the price. The next one is also a mini trunk. This one is going for $225. This must just be a new bag. And I don't know, maybe someone is not aware of the resale value, but that's really close to what it actually is retail. The next one is $450. This is also a mini trunk, double. And then this one is also a mini and this one is going for 550, which is definitely double. Okay, so I'm not even going to claim that I know this brand because this is my first time seeing this brand. And honestly, when I look at it, I think more so a Goyard. So this is going to be, I guess, Farrier Le Page. This is going to be their daily battle 27. So the 27, I'm assuming is the size because I saw a 27 and I saw like a 37, okay? According to the real real, these bags, especially the 27, are gaining mass popularity and whenever one comes up on their site, they are selling out, okay? So this bag retail on their website is $1,200, okay? Let's look at some resale. I found one on Poshmark and it is for 1,000. I found another one on the real world. It is for $1,045. So although these bags are not known or not known in this, I guess in my circles or any of the fashion girls that, that I know, I have, I have I seen them wearing these, but they are definitely keeping their value. Next is going to be Mock and Mock, the Samantha mini bag. I do want to make that distinction because that is what it says in the article. Even though like really large bags are starting to come back, people still love mini bags. I do myself. But this bag is going to be more or so kind of like your dainty going out bag. This bag retails for, let's see on the actual website. 
So this bag retails, again, different prices in different places. I've seen this same, the mini. I've seen this same bag on Mock & Mock. I've seen it on Shop Bop, and I've also seen it on Moto Operandi. So I'm gonna give a range from about $800 to $1,000, okay? Now, let's look on the resale value. So on the real real, they are selling it for $9.85. Another one is $7.96. And then another one is $9.85. Number 18 is going to be the Telfar shopping bag. If you have been living under a rock or if you are not a quote unquote fashion girl or if you're not like, I guess you could say a black woman, you, I guess, would not know what is going on with Telfar. For me personally, the shopping bag does not have enough structure. I like the silhouette of the mini one, but I just don't like the fact that it does not have a lot of structure. I am going to put up here what i'm talking about but if you go on the website which is what i'm showing you right here and i'm just waiting for it to come up you see that the, i'm, I'm assume this is the mini and i'm saying that's the medium and that's the large you can see that every single color and every single size is sold out but i also think that comes from the drive that this person has or how he's driving the marketing and what he's doing with his company they have drops you can line up they sell out and then you have to wait you can get on the website you can get on a wait list and then i was on the i was on the um website recently and it's like something like a drop like any size any color but you have to like put it in, you have to get accepted and all this other stuff. It's a lot of mayhem that is surrounding this brand. Don't get me wrong, I love fashion, but I'm not going to be jumping through hoops to get a bag. I'm not going to walk into your store and buy a whole bunch of stuff so I can get what I really want. I'm not doing all that. When I walk into a store, do you have the bag? How much is it? Ring it up so I can leave. Now, this is also a brand that I wanna talk about when it comes to resale. So Telfar right now, the large bag is currently $257. When you start going on the resale value, I found one on the real real for 310. I found another one for 465. I found another one that was 525. They took 10% off, so now it is at 472. Another one for this is actually a really pretty color. Another one for 425. So when you start talking about Telfar, when you go on the real real or when you go on a pre-love site, you are going to pay more than when you are going to pay in the store or whenever they have a pop-up. Next and finally, not least, which I'm not surprised at all, is going to be the Fendi Baguette. It was originally released in 1997, and then of course they re-released it with Sarah Jessica Parker with that gorgeous, 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 I, would, I wouldn't wear it, but I think the bag is absolutely gorgeous, that purple sequins bag when they redid Sex in the City. The bag is absolutely gorgeous, but I would never wear it, but I understand. It is a very classic bag. Okay, so let us take just a very classic one. It's just going to be black with gold hardware. This one is the Baguette Chain Midi. It retails for $3,290. A pink one is going for $2,550. A multicolored one is going for $2,695. And then we have a white one. It was 3,400, now it has come down to 26. So that rounds out the list. And there are two things that I do want to point out. Y'all know that I love Dior. I actually right now prefer Dior over Chanel. You will notice that on this list, Dior did not make the list. And typically their bags don't. I can give you a perfect example. I have a small gray Dior Ever bag. I paid $3,400 for that bag. I stopped carrying it while it's beautifully made. It is just very heavy. I wish they would come back out with that in a mini. I think it would do very well. But I paid $3,400 for that bag and it's in pristine condition. I've been on Fashion File, I've been on eBay, I've been on The Real Real, I've been on Vestier Collective. And I have seen that bag go for as little as $1,400 to $1,500. That is half of what I paid for. So at this point, I would never sell it, but I bought the bag because I love it. Now, with that being said, Dior did re-release their saddlebag, and when they re-released it, it was actually double what it used to be, inflation times, what have you. But at the same time, that's not an investment piece because within the next couple of years, the prices are going to fall back down. That's the first thing. The second thing that I kind of want to point out is that a lot of the brands on this list, I understand where it's coming from, but we're not even talking about like um, Valentino wasn't on here. Um, like I said, Dior wasn't on here. 
The rest of them like kind of were on there, but even with like the Gucci, that bag for Gucci just came out. So I guess I'm kind of wondering like what the demographics are because it seems like these bags are for like the younger generation. And of course, you know, each generation is supposed to do better than their parents and they're supposed to have, you know, more disposable income. So I'm just curious as to what the demographics are and if that would be able to be looked up because this list seems to be geared more towards so your younger millennials and your Gen Z who have that disposable income to spend money on these kinds of purchases. Let me know in the comments if you were surprised. Let me know in the comments also if you think there was something missing from this collection or from this list. I will leave the article down below. I just want to remind you that here on YouTube, I do upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And of course, right here, I'll put my Instagram handle. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, you guys. Bye.